Welcome to Reeducated TV, where we keep you informed. We are reading from the Anacalypsis, Volume 2, by Godfrey Higgins, Esquire, Book 1, Chapter 1, Saka Saxons. I shall, in this chapter, submit to my reader some observations relating to the ancient Saka of Tartary or North India. These observations will be of importance in the discussion of the origin of letters, which will be contained in a future book, and also of the first importance in the two following books, the object of which will be to show that a real, not a poetical, age of gold and age of learning peace and civilization once existed and that this was under the rule of a sacerdotal caste or order which governed the whole world and which originated the feudal system i shall also show that all the sacred numbers and cycles were intimately connected with and indeed partly arose out of a microscopic theory named by plato in his timeus which was a part of the secret doctrine of genesis and the whole of this i shall also show was intimately connected with the feudal system i fear the extracts from georgius will be found by many of my readers tedious but as proofs of my system from an unwilling witness they are of the first importance and cannot be dispensed with. They are letting you know that the ancient Saka was of Tartary or North India and that a great civilization once existed which was considered a age of peace and learning that was under the rule of a sacerdotal caste or order which governed the whole world out of them came the feudal system or the mandate of heaven among other systems all the sacred numbers and cycles which was a part of the secret doctrine of genesis are closely and intimately connected with the feudal system but you should know that the sacred numbers and cycles that is a part of genesis were only known by a selected few secret initiates or secret societies that held the truth of the secret doctrine which they still do till this day while ordinary people or who was not taught the secret doctrine were left with myths without the true meaning we have seen that one of the most common names of buddha was Sakya, the name of the Lama of Tibet, and Saka and Saksa. From this name of Buddha, it was that the tribes who inhabited an extensive country east of the Caspian Sea and north of Tibet were called Saka. This was the hive whose castes are yet found in the west, called Saxons, having, as Dr. Geddes says, the Hebrew language, they were the Belgic Sassons of Gaul. So, one of the most common names of the Buddha was Saka, which was the name of the Lama of Tibet. From this name of Buddha, these tribes that inhabited an extensive country east of the Caspian Sea and north of Tibet were called Saxons who were Scythians and Buddhist in ancient times. The word Saxons came from the word Saka, and Saka is nothing but the ancient Buddha. You should note that the ancient or genuine language of the Saxons is of the Hebrew language. And I have already shown and proven that the ancient Indus or Scythians were black or Negroes and that they ruled over Asia. However, 
They were the Germanic tribes that journeyed to Rome and later to Britain in 400 to 500 and odd AD and were accompanied by light-skinned or Caucasians. And as mentioned, the Saxons were the Belkic Sassons of Gaul. One of their capitals was Sassons. They were called Sassons by the Welsh, Sacon by the Scotch, and Sassanach or Saxonach by the Irish. They are the people said by Herodotus to be the same as the Scythians. Right? So Herodotus confirms that the Saxons are Scythians. Dr. Skeller maintains the whole of Europe to have been occupied by the Saxons before the arrival of the Celts, but they were, in fact, both tribes of the same people. Scythians, Celts, Saxons were successive castes or swarms from the same hive. If there were any difference, it was merely in the time of their arrival in the West, but it is probable that they were only different names for the same people, as the Britons are called English, Scotch, Welsh, Albanians, Caledonians, Cambrians, etc. The difference in their dialects is only what would naturally arise in unwritten languages in the space of four or five hundred years. No, we already know that the so-called Celts were Scythians. The Arabians, the Libyans, the Egyptians were all Scythians also of the ancient Saka. And now you can safely add the Saxons, who were the same people of the same hive that journeyed to the west at different times. They were all a caste or swarm sent out from a great and excessive populous hive of Tartary or North India or the country of a thousand cities. The only difference between them was their names and dialect due to unwritten language over a period of time. There were castes or swarms sent out in succession from a great and excessively populous hive in Tartary or North India, the country of the thousand cities of Strabo. They were exactly like the tribes sent out from Britain in modern times, at one time to America, at another time to Africa, at another time to Australia. They were the subjects of the only civilized nation on the earth. They took with them everywhere their manners, government, language, religion, and allegiance to their supreme head as our colonies all retained their allegiance to the mother country. They at first nowhere found any of their own high caste, none in fact but such persons as we found in America Aborigines, as we call them. They met with no resistance, but by degrees, as the world became peopled with the successors of previous tribes of their own countrymen and land scarce, wars for possession began to arise. This I shall discuss, however, in my next book. As you can see, the Scythians journeyed across the world from Britain to the Americas, and everywhere they went, they brought their manners, government, language, religion, and allegiance to their supreme head, which can be found around the world. But nowhere can be found any of their high caste, in other words, ancient customs, but the persons of the Americas, the black aborigines of America. They were the closest to the ancient customs because, it is said, they came to the Americas some thousands of years before Christ. So their mythos was before the Scythians journeyed to Britain. No. Is it coincidence that both the ancients of the Indus and the black inhabitants of the Americas wore the same pearl necklaces or ornaments? I would think not. This subject relating to Jews in America will be for another lesson. The word Saka 
is the same as the Hebrew word ske, imaginary, and skeo, to contemplate, and the Greek, in short, mind, constantly confounded with wisdom. The skia kam of the Georgius is probably saka akim. The root is sk, when skim skl, wisdom, and our skill, saka is sax, and sakl, or skl, or skill, or cunning, or knowledge, or scientia, or scientia, or wisdom, in any art, is x, or saka, kl, which means the kal, or wisdom of x, and kl, is x equals 600, l equals 50, equals 650, and the KLDI is the origin in its most remote degree of the Kaladai or Chaldeans. I promised this explanation in Book 11, Chapter 1, Section 1. Kalide, wisely cunning, king, incarnation of wisdom or cunning. The origin of the root SK and KL I shall show when I treat of the origin of letters. I have no doubt that this root is in fact the same as the sg whence come sgh and the latin sagio and saga a witch and sagacitas presagio english sage sagacious presage and the roman officer called sagart who was the sacrificer and the hebrew sagon the assistant or advisor of the high priest from this came the word SLT, Scalit, the name given to Joseph in Egypt, and the meaning of which I apprehend was wise man. Joseph was called a savior, and this word is the same as Salus, Salutis, the barbarian who marched from the north and plundered Jerusalem was a Scythian, or Tatar, or Tartar, he was called Chesak. This is nothing but Saxon or Sesanak. Tat is a name of Buddha. I know this paragraph is confusing to some, but before there were letters, there was the language of numbers, of which letters came out of, and with this system, the root of words can be established, which will be explored in future work. There was mention of a barbarian who plundered Jerusalem, and he was a Scythian and Saxon of Tatar. And you should also note that the ancient Buddha has many names. Tat is the name of the Buddha of which Tatar or Tartary got their name or came from. No, all heads of wisdom or of any practice got their names from the Saka, from the Hebrew Saga, who was the assistant advisor to the high priest, to a sagart, a Roman officer, and a saga, a witch, and we see that Joseph was given the name Skilar Skalit, which means wise, and he was also given the name Salus and Salutis, which means savior. But you should be aware that Ptolemy I also had the title of savior over Egypt and Libya. He was called Saltir or Saltiras in Greek, which means savior. He was given the name because he helped to conquer the Libyans' uprising during the Greeks' rule of Africa. Muhammad was called a Saka or Sakseswara, as well as a Vikramaditya. These are all merely descriptive epithets, and from the fact named above, we find the reason why the Mohammedans spared the statues of Buddha in India. It strongly confirms the doctrine of the secret religion of the Mohammedans. Mohammed was thought to be a renewed incarnation of divine wisdom and of course of Buddha in his tenth avatar. So here they mention the Mohammedans' secret religion and that Muhammad was called a Saka or a Saksesawara. They also mentioned that Muhammad was thought to be a renewed incarnation of wisdom and of Buddha in his tenth avatar. But 
it is key to note that Genghis Khan and others were also considered to be the 10th avatar of Buddha. In the time of the pharaohs, the Egyptians had a class of persons called sages or wise men. Considering that Saka means Buddha, the god of wisdom, I cannot much doubt that the Irish Sagan, a priest, the Scandinavian Saga, the Hebrew SGN, the Sagun, noble or great man, are all the same. The heathen Irish had their Sagun like the Tyrians and Chaldeans. Borosus gives the epithet of Sagun a jijison to Noah. The Kohenia is the Hebrew word for a priest, a Kohen, and it is not unlikely that the Khans who are said by the Indians and Persians to have erected the Druidical circles had their names from this word. I think it probable also that the Kohen had a near relation to the Khan. So the Kohenya is the Hebrew word for a priest and he shows the possible connection between the Kohen and the Khan. But notice where he says that the Druidical circles were built by these Khans, according to the Indians and the Persians, who were all of the Buddha, the ancient Saka or Tat. They also mentioned that the Egyptians had a class of people called sages, the Scandinavians, the heathen Irish, the Tyrians, and the Chaldeans all had the same title of Saga, sages, Sagun, or other sacerdotal titles. From what my reader has seen in the 10th book, I think he can have little or no doubt that the debris are alluded to refers to the refined and beautiful system of wisdom there developed. There is scarcely a corner of the globe where the doctrines of wisdom may not as a mythos be found. My learned friend Eusebe de Salverte has clearly proved that by the sages or sagas of the Scandinavians, the books of wisdom are meant, the word saga being the same as the French sages and the Latin sagar. From the same author, page 395, it appears that the Razani or Razanu can be nothing but children of ras or wisdom. Thus, it is evident that to speak of the Sake or Saxons was the same as to speak of the Buddhist. It was the general name, as we call many sects of Catholics or Protestants Christians. In the video on the origin of the Amazon, I had mentioned that the name Ras is from the ancient Indus, which means wisdom. Here we have further proof or confirmation that Ras means wisdom, the children of Ras, the Razit, the children of wisdom. Most Rastas thrive for true knowledge. There was a time in Jamaica where Rastas were prosecuted or worst if they were caught with the book of the Maccabees but many Rastas still had the book in their possession, regardless of the risk, because knowledge was like cooked food and was more important to them. From this, their sacred books were called Sakas or Sagas or Sages, as we call the books of the Indian Vedas or Bedas, or, in fact, Buddhas or books of wisdom. This all agrees very well with the learned language of Kashmir or Kashmir having been Chaldee and it accounts for Dr. Geddes having found their language to be Hebrew. The Norwegian kings were called Hakim. This is but Hakim or HKM and the substitute for the Jewish high priest was a Sagan or Sagan. Closely allied to these is the Hebrew root KSP an enchanter. KSP is literally two words and means SP wise and K as that is as a wise person. Anciently all priests were physicians 
and were called Hakim, as physicians are yet called in the East. But this word always conveyed with it a sacredness of character. This is all in keeping with their gods Odin, Woden, Thor, with the bud was Trigoranos in the Wales, and the old man Buddha in Scotland. All these came with the first or the second tribe of Saxons to the north of Germany and to Britain. Strabo says, All the tribes eastward of the Caspian Sea are called Scythic or Scythic, the Da next the sea and the Sake more eastward, but every tribe has a particular name. All are nomadic. It is in attention to this which causes all our confusion. We have here the clans of Scotland and the tribes of Bedouin Arabs. The Sake, pronounced in Sanskrit like our Sake, have made in Asia eruptions similar to those of the Sumerians. Thus, they possessed themselves of Bactria and the district of Armenia, called after them Sakasena. This word, I believe, is only Sakasana, country of Sakas. I have no doubt that when Numa tribes were driven out of the lands which they loosely settled, they passed like the Israelites from Egypt, through countries occupied by other tribes in search of new habitations, till they could go no farther. Then a desperate struggle took place for the possession of the extreme country, Thus, Saxons arrived in Germany and Britain from countries the most remote. Right? So Strabo confirms that all the tribes of Scotland and of the Bedouin Arabs, of Armenia and the Germanic tribes or the Saxons were Scythians that arrived in Germany and Britain from countries the most remote and that they took the same journey as the Israelites from Egypt through the territories inhabited by other tribes. It appears from a note of Dr. Geddes on the word create in the first verse of Genesis to be seen in his critical remarks on that passage that my view of this subject is supported by the Book of Wisdom, Justin Martyr and Origen, he also shows that a passage in the book of Maccabees, which has been supposed to oppose my doctrine, has been wrongly translated. He also shows that in the Scato-Saxon dialect, the word bra still retains its original signification, and in a note he says he hopes he shall one day be able to prove that almost all our genuine Saxon words are either Hebrew, Chaldee, Arabic, or Persic. I am very sorry the doctor did not live to carry his intention into effect, which I am sure he could have done. I shall return to the Saxons again in a future book and give their history, which will be found to be of the very first importance. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Take care.